I was thinking this morning as I was having my uh, private worship with God, I believe our private worship dictates our public worship. Uh, if you have a private worship, then I think you can have a public worship. I think that's important. You have to privately worship God first, and then you can worship God publicly. And I, I had it in order this morning. I got it in order. Do I always get it in order? No, but I did this morning. Got it in order this morning, so I worshiped very early this morning. Man, God had a wonderful worship service, and then I come here and had another wonderful worship service. In the song service, the song service. Just, I told the choir, I said, you guys sang to Jesus this morning. You just sang to Jesus. And Angela sang to Jesus. I mean, you know, it's, that's, that's what it's all about. Well, our last Sunday we started this uh, series. It's going to be a three. I get, may end up four or five. I don't know, but who cares? As long as it's God's word. Amen. Doesn't matter how long. Jesus is the truth versus Satan, the liar. You know, that's what you said, Earl. He's a liar. He's the father of it. He started it all. Still good at it. He's still good at it. But we, we're, we're looking at, uh, and, and I'm going to change it up just a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to change that from God's seed versus Satan's seed. I said the devil's seed last week, I think it was. But I wanted to give you some things that I just said. I just sat down and began to talk to God, the Holy Spirit, about some things about uh, the chapter 6, Genesis chapter 6. If you want to open your Bibles, oh, that's what we'll be dealing with, Genesis chapter 6. Uh, but I, I thought about uh, the evil world then and, and, and all that. And, and then I thought about there have... There could have been about 750 million people, they said, from, from Noah, I'm, I mean, from Adam to Noah. Maybe somewhere thereabout, they calculated somewhere about 750 million people on the earth at the time of the flood. Now, the biblical answer for the creation of earth is not millions, billions of years. Forget that. That's nothing more than a scientific theory. That's all that is. Uh, Brother Ken Ham, who is a scientist, who is the... Uh, beginning uh, Genesis, answers in Genesis. Is that the answers in Genesis, something like that? Yeah, Genesis. I, I've studied him a lot. Wonderful man of God. Boy, he's good. Built the ark up there, you know, Kentucky, Indiana, wherever it's at. I mean, I don't know where it's in both parts or not. I think it's Kentucky. Anyway, I, this is this is his his theory, biblically biblical theory, and and the Earth is only six thousand years old. Don't get hung up on that millions of years stuff. And, you know, you hear that a lot. So I, I, I'll, I'll start off with that. From the time of Adam to Noah was ten generations. Ten generations. And the number of years was between Adam and, and Noah was probably about 1,658 years. They kind of say, give, take a year or two. What's the difference, you know? There's somewhere there about. 1,658 years. And then I said, okay, from, 19, from 1658, from the time that God uh, destroyed the earth, in 16, which would be 1658 B.C., and uh, to the birth of Christ was 2324. So we've got 2,324 years from the birth of Christ, I mean from, from Adam to the birth of Christ. We've got 1,658 years from Noah to, uh, I mean from Adam to Noah. And uh, which would be a total of 3,982 years of human history uh, to that point. Now, so it gets a little more interesting as I begin to put this all together and begin to study it. And Christ died at the age of 33 years old. That's how old he was when he died. So if we calculate B.C. to A.D., then Jesus was born. I, I, I know some of the theologians said he was born before A.D. I, I don't buy I don't buy that. I think, you, I think it began when B.C. ended. I think A.D. began. And, and when Jesus was born, I think that's when A.D. began. So I'm going to say A.D. won. Now, he was 33 years. How old if we subtract 33 from 2018? Jesus, Jesus died then, 33. This is 2018. So if you subtract 33 from that, you will get 1,985 years of church history. Not human history, church history. We have, uh, uh, here we have 3,982 years of human history from Adam to Christ. From Christ in Acts chapter 2, we have 18, I mean, uh, yeah, 1,985 years of church history. That's where we're at today, right now. Okay. 
Well, I, was, I thought, I understand that, but it was a little interesting that I, I looked at something and put it all together. So if we had human history, 3982, 33 years that Jesus was, that he lived, and 1985 years. You know what, how many years that's been? 6,000 years. That's how it has been from, from Adam to now has been 613 years. Uh, 6,000 years, I'm sorry. That was interesting. Did you ever think of that? I hadn't. I had never thought of it. But that's the, that's the way the Bible is. Now, but something a little more interesting. Now, here's my question. How could human humanity become so wicked? How could they become so wicked in just 1,658 years? Boy, they got me. They were horrible. The very imaginations of humanity was horrible. You can read it in this chapter, and I'll get to it in just a moment. So we have 1,658 years and wickedness among the people. It was unbelievable. Now, how, how could we as people of this church age become so wicked in 1,985 years of human history? From Adam to Noah was 1,658 years. And, and from, from uh, the church age, from, Genesis, from Acts chapter 2 to right now, it's been 1,985 years. And how wicked have we got? You get the point? For 1,658 years, it got so bad, God says, I'm, I, I'm so sorry that I made man. I'm sorry. I, the word repentance means I'm sorry that I made him because it got so wicked. Now, we're going to deal how, why it got become so wicked here in just a moment but for and uh, so but here we are church age 1985 years and we're about as we're probably as wor worse than they were Amen. we talked about it in the deacons prayer. they're killing what about this 11 killed in the Jewish temple church used to be the safest place you can be you, you know, they'll kill you in a restaurant. They'll kill you in church. They'll do kill you anyway. The world has gone raving mad under demonic Amen. power. Amen. One of the, re the greatest reason I believe in God is because of the immorality of the culture. There's got to be a God. There's got to be a right. Amen. If there's a wrong, and Lord knows well, that's true, who would debate that? All the evil that's going on. So if there is a wrong, there's got to be a right. Amen. 1,985 years, and we are peeking out to the same position that the people in Noah's day were. We're at that point, I believe. We've got earthquakes. We've got, we've got tornadoes. We've got hurricanes. We've got everything. Now we've got diseases like uh, polio, right, among a lot of children. Are you keeping up with that? Did you know God said in the last day there will be pestilence? And I thought that was bugs. That's not bugs, that's diseases. Right. All kinds of these things are going on in our world. And you all, as Christians, better look up for the redemption of the Lord is drawing nigh. That's right. It's getting close. Yeah. According to the word of God. Now, so there's only 327 years difference between the people of Noah's day in our days. 327 years. That's not a whole lot of difference. But boy, we have advanced in immorality. As it was in the days of Noah, it'll be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. As it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, aren't we there at that? Aren't we there? Amen. We are there too. As it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. We got this transgender thing, and, and, and these men want to go to the bathroom with our kids. Lord, have mercy. This is where we have arrived to. We have come to this point. And we need God's people to stand up. Amen. God's preachers need to get off this make you feel good preachers and preach the word. Joel Osteen ought to preach the word. Amen. Instead of bragging on how what he's done and all that stuff, you say, I'm a Joel Osteen fan. I'm not. I'm not any preacher fan that don't preach the word of God. Need to preach the Bible. This is, if we ever needed preachers today, we need them today. Amen. We need them today. Now, we'll look at the incarnation of demons. Now, the great apostasy, population explosion, 
in Genesis chapter 6 when you look at it. And look at verse number 1. And it came to pass when the men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. The population was exploding. So here, the apostasy was on. They had deserted God. They had deserted, I mean, you know, just like the saint. We are living also in the days of apostasy. You say, I don't know what you're talking about, preacher. Do you read the Bible? Are you a Bible reader? If you read the Bible, you see, this just goes in one ear and out. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of people don't get this because they don't know the Bible. You see, this is apostasy. These are the days of apostasy. We have deserted God. Amen. America has deserted God. Amen. And many church members have deserted God. They live in apostasy. I'm just not going to get too involved. And, 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 and let me tell you, we're, we're there. We're there when we see our churches empty, when we see our churches closing their doors. This is happening all over the Southern Baptist Convention. We're in the days of apostasy. And that was what was happening here. But verse number two, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Now, uh, we deal with the sons of God. I, I touched on that last week, but I'm just going to go through the whole, whole thing again because some of you wasn't here. Sons of God are angels. Sons of God in the Old Testament are angels. As a matter of fact, Sons of God are mentioned five times in the Old Testament. You'll find it here in Genesis and, and then also three times in the book of Job. Three times, sons of God. But they are angels. And so there are good angels and there are bad angels. So these bad angels here, one of the great scholars that I study under and have studied under for years, uh, John, John, uh, John Phillips, I met John, had lunch with John and his wife in the First Baptist Church of Jacksonville, Florida, so I got acquainted with him. I, I'm not personally acquainted with him, but I know John. I met him and his wife, had a wonderful visit with him. He ate lunch with me. I was sitting there by myself, and he said, can I join you? And that's how I got acquainted with John Phillips. I got most all of his books. One of the greatest theologians the world's ever known. He's traveled all over the world. And boy, is he a great preacher. So I study a lot under him, and I read his book. I said, how, how, I wondered how John was going to deal with this passage of scripture. You see, we got some of the theologians that believe that, uh, that these angels cohabited with the daughters of men and brought forth children. And we got some that don't believe that because of the verse of scripture that says, you know, we will be as, we neither marry nor given in marriage, we are, but we'll be as angels in heaven. Well, and, 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 and I, I read that where John said, I'm going to call your attention to that verse. It doesn't say that the angels are sexless. It says the angels don't marry. So I, I got my attention. They, they, he said they didn't, the Bible don't say they're sexless, but they, they don't marry. But do you marry in heaven? Do I marry in heaven? Will Barbara and I be married in heaven? No. No. There's no marriage in heaven. So it doesn't say... You know, just because, you know, that, they're, that the angels didn't marry in heaven doesn't mean that they're sexless. And he said, I, I believe, according to the scripture, that somehow. Now, let me ask you this. You say, well, how can an angel, an angel is a spirit and spirit is invisible. Okay, can it be possible uh, for a spirit to inhabit what we call a, a theophany? Can a spirit come into a human body? Is that possible? Yes. Yes, it is possible. Because if you read Genesis chapter 18, if you read Genesis chapter 18, you will find that all at once, Abraham's sitting in the tent of his door, and there's three men come walking up to him in the 18th chapter. And these three men happen to be, one of them, the Lord. And two of them were what? Angels. Angels. You Bible readers know what I'm talking about. Two of them were angels. The Lord said, stayed and talked with Abraham, right? And informed Abraham, Abraham, you and Sarah are going to have a baby. I'm a hundred years old. Well, that would be good material for that line magazine, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm a hundred years old. Sarah, 90 years old. We're going to have a baby. Yeah, you are. 
And I got these two angels here, and they're human. They're human. In human form, it's what we call a theophany. It's a spirit in, in, incarnated, incarnated into a human body. Okay, so it's a human body. And so they leave and go down to Sodom and Gomorrah, and God and, and, and Abraham has a conversation, correct? And so Abraham is trying to save Lot, his nephew, that's down there, and so he tries to get God not to destroy the city. Well, you know the rest of the story. The angels go down there, deliver Lot, get him and his uh, daughters and wife out, and then God destroys the city. Okay, my point is, spirits can take up human bodies Amen. because they did then, and if they did then, they can do it here. It is possible. It is possible. I'm not saying, but John, Brother John, I'm going to tell you that Brother John Phillips, the great theologian, says it was possible that these angels, so wicked and so bad, that incarnated and, and, and uh, uh, cohabited and go in and have sex with the women, and then they produced giants, nephonyms, and it's all in his scripture, and it produced those children. They were huge men, huge giants, nephonym. And actually, when you look at nephonym, which is a Hebrew word, it is fallen one. So now we've got, and things begin to get awful bad, that the imaginations of people were so bad, so bad. God said, I looked down and, and, and said, let me see if I can get that verse up there. And the Lord, my spirit, first of all, he said this before we get to the other part of it. My spirit will not always strive with humanity. I'm not going to always deal with you. And it got so bad then that God wasn't even a striving with people. And so we only had eight saved, correct? We only had eight people saved at the flood. So the Holy Spirit wasn't striving. Do you see the Holy Spirit striving with people today much? He's not, is he? No. I don't see the Holy Spirit knocking sinner's door anymore. I preached a revival in a little church, Antioch Baptist Church, before we get to the 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 bridge down there in the North City several years ago, way back in the 70s. I preached, I hadn't even got into the message good, and I had 10 people saved. I just preached a little simple service, 10 people come out and got saved. God has withdrawn His Spirit from America. Amen. God has withdrawn His Holy Spirit. We no longer see the Spirit of God. Now, we worship in Spirit. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about calling people into the kingdom. He said, my spirit. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. You can't get saved without the spirit of God. That's right. Amen. You can't do that. You don't get saved unless the Holy Spirit shows you you're lost. You've got to have that awareness of lostness. And so, my spirit will not always strive with man. His flesh shall be 120 years. I've got something, I think. On that. I want you to look at this now. And I, I, I studied this here. At the beginning of creation, humanity lived for what? Several hundred years, right? They did. In population of the earth, God let them live for several hundred years, and they populated the earth. They had to do that. That's the way he let them do. Okay, we understand that. But here, he cuts it from several hundred years to what? A hundred and twenty years. But he doesn't stop there when you go on over into Psalms chapter 90, verse number 10. Look how he lowers it to he lowers it from hundreds of years old to 120 years old. And he said, now man will cut it to 70 to 80 years. And that's where it is today. Some people live longer than 70. Some people live longer than 80. Some people don't. But we don't live the hundreds of years and we don't. Now, I had a preacher, friend, a preacher that I got acquainted with in, in Asheville, North Carolina. He was 114. And he preached about an hour. We had him in pastor's conference. I got him. He signed my New Testament. I, I, and uh, I think he was from Virginia. And he, and he, he made the statement. said, I believe I'll be living when Jesus comes back. Unfortunately. Or, you know, I mean, I guess unfortunately he didn't. Didn't live that long. He wanted to. He's 114 years old. He didn't make it to 120, but he beat 80, right? Are you going to make it longer than 80? Are you going to make it to 70? I don't know whether, I didn't think I would. My dad didn't make it that long. My dad died in his 60s. I got a brother that died at 52. We don't know when we're going to die, but ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you one thing. You are going to die. 
and I am going to die. We all are going to die. So God just kept lowering it, lowering it, lowering it. Now, let's move on. The godless activity. There were giants, nephilims in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children. Now this has to be somebody. Some people says it was the, the children of Seth. I, I mean, uh, Cain, I'm sorry. Cain was the one that killed his brother. I, 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 I just can't believe that. I, I just can't believe that. So I think that it was possible that the world was so wicked, these, these spirits... Do you understand how, wi how wicked spirits are, that demons are? Do you understand how wicked they are? Just watch the news. Look at the people. Do you believe in possession? Do you believe that demons can possess a human body? Do you believe that, you, that, that demons can possess children? Let me tell you something. Now, while I'm on the subject, while I'm on the subject, if you got children, let me encourage you. Never allow them to play those games that are so bad of cutting people apart, shooting people, and all that. I don't care what this society says, that will influence a child. Amen. Don't let them do that. Those games are dangerous. It opens up. And, and, and you know how demons get in people? Through such a thing as that starts here, you might. And, and, and then they get in through alcohol. They can enter to you through alcohol. They can enter into you through drugs. That's how they do their work. And we're seeing a culture that is so demonic today Worse than I've ever seen. Do you think it's worse than you've ever seen it? Amen. It's worse than I've ever seen it in my life. Isn't it going to get any better? Probably not. Because you read said, Timothy, and it said that peerless time shall come. So, let's move to verse number five. The growing anarchy and God saw. When you look at anarchy, you know, you begin to think of its lawlessness and disorder. Good heavens, are we there? Rebellion. Are we there? Yeah, we're, we are. This growing, and they saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. What a culture that was. But it's just, ours is just as bad or maybe worse than that. See, preacher, you're a prophet of gloom. No, I'm a, I'm a prophet tells the truth. Well, I don't want to hear this. You need to hear this. Every one of you need to hear this. Young people, you need to hear this. Old people, you need to hear this. This is God's word. This is where we're at today. This is where we're at. And we need to do, I want to do something about it. I really do. I want to do something about it. I worry about my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. And it repented. It made God sorry. See, he was sorry to the Lord that he'd even made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. Why did I do this? Why did I make him this way? Look what they've done. Look what they're doing. I can just see God up there. Oh, God. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me, made me sorry that I had made them. And he destroyed and wiped out a whole culture, possibly 750 million people and only eight people saved. How many people is going to heaven today? Where are most people going? According to the Bible. You Bible readers know what I'm talking about. You know where I'm going. You Bible readers know where I'm going. So you would say that most people die without Christ, right? Amen. Absolutely. Is that biblical? Sure it is. Amen. Because Jesus said, broad is the road that leads to destruction. That means real freeway. It's just a freeway. And that's where people are going. Multitudes of people are going in that direction. And they're going in that, headed in that direction. Leads to destruction. But narrow is the way, very narrow way, that leads to life. And few there be that what? Find it. So you see the Bible. These are the words of Jesus. Amen. So th this is what he's talking about. He said, that's how it is. That's the way it is. 
He destroyed the whole generation. Only eight people got saved. Eight. Eight people. Well, I guess you say, preacher, I wish you'd preach on heaven. I do too. But I didn't have a, I didn't have a sermon on heaven. Sons of God. Here are they. If you want to make note of those, Genesis chapter 6, 2, 6, 4. And I'm sorry, Joe, uh, then Job 1, 6, 2, 1, Job 38, 7. Those are where you'll find it. These are angels. However, there are good angels and wicked angels. But these are wicked angels. Now, Genesis 18. I told you that and shared that with you. Sons of God mentioned five times in the Old Testament and sons of God mentioned six times in the New Testament. I want you to keep that on your mind as I get to through here in just a moment. How do you become a son of God? How did the angels become sons of God? Sons indicate somebody birthed them. Or, in God's case, God created them. Right? Didn't God create with the angels? So how did sons of God, angels become angels? God created them, and they're called his sons by creation. But also, he created Adam from the dust of the ground, and he is the son of God. Right? Called the son of God. Adam would call the son of God. Okay, you got that. All right, you hang in here with me. So the sons of God, angels, were created by God, given the privilege to make decisions. They had decision making. I thought they were robots. A lot of people said, well, why did, why did God do this? Why did God do that? Either, either God had to give you a will to choose or God had to make you a robot and God said, I ain't making no robots. I'm making people. I'm going to give them a will to choose. You can choose or you can reject. You're responsible. I'm responsible for the decisions I make. Right? So these angels were responsible for the decision they make. Satan, the most powerful angel of all angels, Lucifer, rebelled against God. I want to take God's throne. I'm going to kick God off his throne. I'm going to move in where he's at. And there's a host of angels, myriads of angels. Uh, one third of them rebelled in, in Revelation chapter 12 and said they rebelled with him. So that's where the demons come from. Amen. And therefore kicked them out of heaven. And now here they are, according to John, John Phillips, and he's a great one. He says they did. Well, do you believe in that? Whether they believe it or not? You're going to have to come, you're going to have to come up with something. You're going to have to come up with something. But I believe, I believe it could be very possible. I believe it could be possible. Because I believe that, how, how, did, how did God get in you? Through the Holy Spirit, right? Amen. How did God get in me through the Holy Spirit? I asked, I, I asked First of all, God revealed himself to me, and I, asked, and I asked him to come in. I said, okay, Lord, won't you come into my heart, come into my life. He moved in, right? Amen. He moved in. Holy Spirit influenced me, and I, heard, I, I believe that. I accept him. He come in. Okay, damn. He shut the door, sealed up my spirit. It's holy. It's righteous without sin. How does a demon get into a person? Same way. Just as the Holy Spirit can come in to me and I become a Christian, a demon can come in to Joseph Dahmer, uh, uh, Saddam Hussein, uh, Stalin, and all those people. They just invite him in, and they're there, and they are demon-possessed people. And he controls their life. Do you believe that? Amen. Okay, all right. So now, 1 Peter chapter. Now, now, here's the reason. Here is the reason why that God destroyed that first earth. Here's the reason. And I believe if that's possible, if Brother John Phillips is right, if Brother John is right, and I, I, I'm going to agree with him because I've read the other theologians and I don't agree with what they explain, how they explain the sons of God in Genesis chapter 6. I don't, I don't agree with them. I have to, I've got to come up with some kind of belief. And I believe John Phillips is right. And here's what he said. And of course, here's what Peter says. He says, for if God spared not the angels that sinned. Okay. 
And I believe that what, what, what happened are these angels, sons of God, that cohabited with the daughters of man, that produced, sin, produced these race of giants that become so wicked and so bad that God destroyed the earth, but cast them down to hell. Now, from that period of time, God brought judgment on the world by a flood and killed all the human race, with the exception of eight people, right? What, well, if the devil were the ones that were incarnate that produced these children to become so wicked that caused God to bring judgment upon the earth, what did God do with the angels? Did he punish them? Of course he did. And these probably were what he did. When they cohabited with, with the women and brought all of this uh, evil upon that culture and God destroyed that culture then here it is he cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be deserved unto judgment those wicked angels that cohabited with the daughters and brought judgment upon the earth have been in hell ever since and will be there until the judgment of God and you say I thought all demons I thought there's demon loose they are demons loose this is a sect of demons that were so bad so there are demons that look not as bad as them. Could you imagine if this crowd was turned loose on us today? How bad they were? That they were so bad that God had to put them in chains? They're locked up in hell and been there ever since that the first earth was destroyed. I don't know who you're with me or not, but I'm having a good time. Because God hath revealed this to me. And I want to tell you, this is where that nanny goes on looking and, and spread not and spared not the old world. See, now tie it in. Tie in verse 4 and tie it in with verse 5. And spared not the old world. He didn't spare the old world because of these angels. He put them in hell, put them in chains, and therefore but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And I believe the very people that caused it were those fallen angels right there that cohabited with the daughters of man. Look at Jude chapter six, chapter 1 verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, God put them out into the world, cast them out of heaven into the world. Okay, that was their, their first estate of course was heaven, and he cast them out, but left their own habitation he hath reserved in everlasting chains. They're locked up under darkness unto the judgment of the great day and one day. God will bring those evil fallen angels out of hell and declare judgment upon them. And then he will cast them into the lake of fire where they will be forever and ever and ever. Don't know who you're with me or not, but I'm having a good time. I believe every word I'm telling you today. Every word I'm telling you, I believe it. You say, boy, that's deep. Well, you are older Christians. You ought to be off the milk onto the meat. I gotta get, you got to get Christians off the milk of the word and get them on the meat of the word. And think about it. So you think about this. You think about it. Now, in closing. They, and let me just give you the definition of left the first. The angels who did not stay within the limits of authority under God gave them. God gave them certain limits and authority to do and they disobeyed him and therefore took up residence in those uh, men and then cohabited and caused all the trouble. So they, they left their first estate. Conclusion, Luke 17, 26, 27. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the coming Son of Man. Done quoted that. They did eat, they drank, they married wise, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. He ended it. Interesting here. Generation Z. I've studied all the generations of our culture. Generation Z were born from between 1999 and 2015, which only teenagers from the age 13 to 13, from 13 to 18 are included in this statement. 24 percent, 24 percent of Generation Z strongly agree. Now I want you to get this: strongly agree that what is morally right and wrong changes over time based on society. Will you agree with that? 24% of 13 to 18 teenagers believe that. Do you see what we've got in our culture? 
Don't you see what's going on in our culture among our children, children killing children, and say it's not more. Hey, Papa, Grandpa, old man, it's wrong for you, but it's not wrong for us. I want to tell you, God hadn't changed. Amen. Amen. God's word hadn't changed. It's the same today as it was then. Evil is evil. Amen. And let me tell you something, young people, you 13 to 18, don't ever accept that philosophy in elementary school, in high school, or college. Don't you ever let somebody tell you that because that is wrong. It's not situation ethics. No matter what the situation is, right? It's wrong to steal. It's wrong to, to lie. It's wrong to drink. It's wrong to have sex outside of marriage. It's wrong, it's wrong to live together and not marry. Don't you buy it. Amen. It hasn't changed. It's still the Word of God, right? Amen. Amen. You said, preach you crazy. I might be, but I, I'm all right. I believe in the Word of God. I believe in the truth. All right. That's it. Say, boy, I'm glad that's over. No, I love you guys. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't preach to you. I love you. We've all got problems. We've all got family problems. We've all got them. And I worry about my children, grandchildren. My children are grown just about my grandchildren. I don't want them to go. I want them to understand that right is right and wrong is wrong. But God forgives, right? And we don't say, well, one sin's worse than the other. There, there's no difference if you, a little lie is just as bad as killing somebody to God. We, we say, well, you, you don't know what she done. You don't know what he done. It don't matter what they done. God forgives. And God restores. And God can do it. So thank God for forgiveness. Amen. And, uh, all right, Earl. Sang me down here. <laughs> Lord. Well, it's my, heart, my heart is broken because of, of our country. Amen. It is, this is sad what's going on in this country. It is ungodly what's going on in this country. Who's going to be killed in the morning? What are they going to go out in the morning? Some of these demonic possessed, possessed people, what are they going to do in the morning? They're going to go somewhere and they're going to shoot, they're going to put bombs, they're going to do something. I guarantee you something else will happen. It's just the way it is. It breaks my heart. I don't like to see America this way. Amen. I don't like to see it this way. Do you? No, you don't. You, you don't want to see it this way. I know you guys. We, I, I wish it was different. I want to try to make it different. I, I, let me tell you something. I, 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 was a, you know, I was an athlete. Let me say this early on. Hey, I'm, I'm hold on just a minute. And, and all I did was play ball. I, I did nothing else. I, that's all I did all my life, play ball. But I, I worked at it. I had to work at it. I worked out hard. I practiced, I practiced, I practiced, I practiced. And I said, I do not want to sit on the sideline. I want to be able to play ball. I want to be able to be in a game. I don't want to sit on the sideline. I want to get in the game. And, and, and I had to practice and practice and practice and practice and do this and do that. And, and fortunately, I never was on the, I didn't have to sit on the bench. I always was able to play because I committed myself to get better. That's the same way I feel about God's work, his team. We got some church members that are on the sideline. They're not in the game. They are not in the game. Let me tell you, you need to get off the sideline and get in the game. Amen. And they need to get on where God can use you at. Get in the game. And when God's people get in the game, we'll see some things happen. We're doing better. We're doing better. I'm seeing God do a lot of things here. Thank God for that. Not me, it's him, Holy Spirit. But we need to be in the game. And let God use you. Leave here today and say, God, I want to get in the game. Where can I serve you at, God? What can I do for you, God? How can I, how can I be better today? And make a difference. Make a difference. All right. Okay. Stand with us, if you would. And Earl's going to lead us in him. Father, we love you, Father, and thank you for this wonderful time that we have come to offer to the people here an opportunity to respond to your word. You speak to your people. You speak to those who are lost. In Jesus' name, amen. 3.30 to bottom of the page. Gracious Lord, no tender voice like mine can peace afford. I 
need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I need thee every hour. Stay thou nearby. Temptations lose their power when thou art nigh. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior.